Uh, everybody on Roadie Shorts, I'm trying to get our TM and that. She's really hard to pin down. She's running all over the place. Now she's gone to catering. Yvette, are you going to eat first now? I'm just going to take a bite out of it. I'm going to nail her down. We'll be back. We'll be back. That's finishing eating. <laughs> I am. I'm chewing. All this for you people. All this staircases. Trying to find a stair, a, a proper seat to do this. All right. I'll just be right here. Yeah, it works. Excuse me, you're in the handicap section. You can sit here. Uh, finally, how long have we been trying to do this? Uh, yeah. When did you start working for? <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, it's December now. And now, since in October, I started a women in touring segment of Roadie Shorts. Definitely been trying to get in on this. That's true. Absolutely. So, everybody, this is Yvette. She's our TM on this. How did you say your last name? Ullman? Ullman. Yeah. Ullman. That's Neither actually kind of easy. Very easy. It's a German last name. Yeah, you're originally from Germany. What yes. part of Germany? East Germany. Born and raised behind the Iron Curtain. Oh boy. I was 14 when the wall came down, and um, then a whole new world opened up for me, including musically and um you know traveling and all that stuff so yeah if, when, i think if the wall wouldn't have come down i would not be sitting here with you right now really yeah because we weren't able to travel um into western countries gotcha yeah gotcha were you were you into music at an early age oh yeah my mom's that's music kinda, teacher oh so that's kind of how you got into this i started playing thing. piano when i was four yeah i went to music school for eight years and then okay. um I took some vocal lessons, you know, I played, was in my mom's choir, of course, had my own band for a hot minute nice. through high school, and then I realized I do want to be in music, but I do not want to be on the performing side. <laughs> so, so I figured that out really early on in life. Being on behind the scenes, what was your first behind the scenes gig? It was a tour manager, was it? No, no, no. I started super, um, how do you call it, very... You know, the report was you go find your in somehow, which for me was record company. I yep. started as a publicist at a record okay. company okay. in uh, Century Media in Dortmund, Germany. And then um, I did that for three years. And then I moved over to Nuclear Blast, another heavy metal label yep, in Stuttgart. Yeah. And um, was A&R for three and a half years there. Okay. And that's how I then met all the bands I started to manage in 2000. Five, when I started working with direct management, I managed Demi Borgir, In Flames, The Coil, Chimera. This was all this from was, office, though. It wasn't traveling. A lot of Is traveling. Yeah, was I traveling. was the one in the office that was always excited to go to the states and meet with all the label people sure. and uh, and go on the tours and stuff like that. Um, the other people in our office didn't really want to do that. So that's how I got the exposure. And then I really started connecting with a lot of people in the States. And, you know, I did seven years of management. And I, eventually I was like, I, I really don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. It's been, you know, yeah. pretty hard road. But it was great. I met a lot of people along the way, a lot of people that I'm still friends with. Right. And, um, yeah, we have uh, come a long way. Then, you know, 2011, a friend of mine that I met from before asked me if I could help out on the Bon Jovi tour in Europe. They needed a German production assistant. Okay. And that's how I kind of got into the touring world. Um, yeah. I actually did Nickelback first. Okay. And, production? Uh, production coordinator, yep. And then uh, did Bon Jovi into Jay-Z, Beyonce. No, actually Justin Timberlake first. So I was production coordinator for like three years and then 
because I was actually tired of managing anyways. I was yeah. like, I give me something different to do, something yeah. where I can grow. And I enjoyed it, but eventually I was like, all right, I need to do something else. And right, right. Went from that into doing a couple VIP uh, things for VIP Nation, was on the weekend tour, and then uh, Black Sabbath. So I met Tony, okay. and then Tony hired me to be his personal assistant for the rest of the year and a half of the the end tour that they did. Yeah, that was the best time of my life. Awesome. Yeah, and then yeah, eventually Gavin called, and I have met those guys in 2012 on the Nickelback tour, yeah. so we became fast friends then. Yep. So we were out with them for like six months, and um, you know, it was a really fun tour. 2015, I started working with Bush. Uh, first as the assistant tour manager and then um, eventually took over tour managing and I'm still here so I think I started tour managing in June July 2016 and then okay. been there ever since is that your favorite role tour manager no no well okay so if you if you couldn't <laughs> do tour managing anymore what would you do so here's the thing, I gave up management because I did not want to be in charge of everything anymore. And so. now you are on tour. And that's why I was like, I was loving the assistant tour manager job, the personal assistant job, to not be the person in charge right. for everything and, right. I, and you know, everyone. Um, the camp is small enough that I still enjoy it. Um, yeah. I worked on way bigger tours before I fully dove into the right. Bush camp, right. um, which they, you know, the bigger the tour, the more challenges usually sure and um, I like this size much better honestly um, it's more intimate it's more family yeah. and yeah I was I but I really preferred to not be in charge all the time because it's it's a lot mentally yeah, I bet. What's, your, what's your favorite thing about touring in general my favorite thing about touring in general is to just get to see different cities countries be in different places and really just kind of find out what you like the best and go back there to do a yeah. take a vacation you know yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean when do you ever get to go to billings montana where we are today i've never been here before right. um same with the summer we were in bozeman montana yeah, and some I, of the fly dates yeah i fell in love yeah. with that so i know i will well, i want to come back to montana eventually at some point next year maybe um cool. So yeah, the discovery aspect is still fun, even though we've been doing it for so long, but I still find places that I yeah. haven't been to, and I what's, love that. What's your least favorite? My least favorite is it. the hours and to not being able to get my full sleep in, yeah. to just always be on call, especially in this role. That's one thing where I'm like, I would really like to not be on call all the time. So like, for example, when a day off falls on a Monday, you know you bet somebody's gonna call me at 9 30 in the morning sure. when i've worked three in a row all weekend and sure. all i want to do is sleep in sure. um or at least sleep eight hours not even sleep in um so that's really tough and it's starting to get harder for my body um yeah. sleep aspect the bus i sleep well on the bus but i also wake up the minute we stop yeah because it's just in me that i know stopping means either we're at the hotel and i have to get everybody's keys or we're at the truck stop and it's time to potty. Yeah. <laughs> so stopping always. Real glamorous out here, people. So glamorous. <laughs> so I always, yeah, I always wake up on the bus stops and then I have a hard time falling back asleep. And then, of course, you look on your phone and the yeah. night is over. Yeah, so of course. turning well, off you, my brain. Once you get into that, forget it. <laughs> forget about it. You're not it. going back to sleep. No. <laughs> so, but. So you were just nominated for an award. I was, is yes. It, is that voting over now? It's over, yeah. I, oh, I'm, damn it. It's over. It's, it's over on Friday. I voted, people, but I would have put a link so you could go vote. It's okay. We um, were just late doing this. It's very funny that um, I've been in this now for so long. Well, tell like, people what it was first. It was uh, women in life music in Europe. Okay. So since I'm from Germany, I qualified for um, a European crew person. Yeah. And so I was nominated for best female TM uh, Europe. Awesome. I wish that somebody would put more of a spotlight on the women in touring in U.S. because it's become a really strong group of women and I love that and I know Gavin always says he would love to take out more women because he's a yeah. super supporter of female yeah. uh, you know crew and the energy on the road and just bringing that female aspect. Yeah. As a woman on the road, over the years that you've been doing it, have you seen a lot of things change for women on the road? Uh, yeah. For the better? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's definitely changed. I mean, that Me Too culture, I mean, I know it's a bit of a... 
dead horse, but it's definitely uh, brought more awareness to the whole behavior and what people got away with right, over the right. you know in sure. the past. Sure. And now that people know it's a thing, I feel like they're not as um, fast forward about it anymore you know okay. there's a there's a one thing when you flirt with somebody and have a little fun flirt on sure, the road sure. but um there was some aggressiveness to a point yeah, where it's like, a boundary yeah you know you gotta you, cross. you gotta you gotta be more respectful and i feel like that definitely has happened and um have you been have you been treated differently in the past because mm, being a female on the road well you know i feel like in this role, not really, okay. because I feel like there is a certain amount of respect that comes being a yeah, tour manager sure. yeah. automatically. Sure. Um, because, I mean, when I was a production coordinator, I mean, honestly, they always have been very respectful to me personally, but I'm also pretty hardcore because I'm German. <laughs> I don't take any shit. <laughs> but I have seen it with other women that may have not been so strong or that just, you know, right. kind of were weaker and just would go with it and then yeah. you know regret it maybe or whatever but um it's uh it's interesting you live and you learn of course your first tour you don't really know what the rules are right. and you know now i feel like there's a lot more of that out there that people give you a bit more guidance yeah. especially like when Danny came on, you know, she didn't really know any of the rules and I took her under my wing and she's like, thank right. God you really trained me and gave me all these right. rules and, you know, what you do in certain situations kind sure. of uh, direction because I didn't get that really. Um, I kind of learned it over the years myself because I was in different categories. I was a manager. I was watching as a manager. I was watching as a you know record company person mm -hmm. you see it from yeah. different angles and yeah. you you kind of know when to have to push back and set your boundaries right. and I think as women we're really a lot weaker than men to set boundaries because we have just that's our gene we're nurturing we're, we're right. taking care of everybody we right. think it's not okay to say no because you know that's that's part of the mothering in, yeah, in, sure. in a woman so sure. I think women now are better at setting boundaries, or starting to become better at setting boundaries. Is there one piece of advice you would give to a woman starting out? And I mean, you obviously started with Danny, so you yeah. must have given her plenty of advice. But is there one thing that? Uh, that yeah, she never I, into I this? definitely don't bite the hand that feeds you, for one, which also means don't shit where you eat. Right. And always be respectful, and always leave your ego at the door. That's a Bona quote, um, and I love that because he said we have, in our band, we have super strong egos. Yeah. And when we get into a room and bring our egos in, we would never get a record done. Gotcha. We have a really point of saying, all right, we're going to leave our egos at the door. Yeah. And it kind of goes the same with out here. you got to gel with everybody. If sure. you're just trying, you know, if you're a team player and you gel with everyone, you kind of let leave your ego out right. of the whole occasion right. you have a lot bigger chance of succeeding Absolutely. putting the show together at a nicer speed and also have a good time yeah. yeah so i feel like if you're not ready to compromise or you know let your ego not get in the way you don't don't even start it good advice good advice people all right last question so when you're not on the road which is an often i guess <laughs> Uh, what's your favorite thing to do when you're at home? Well, I also have another career. I'm a real estate agent ah. in Nashville. And uh, I started that during the pandemic pretty successfully because a lot of people already knew me through, you know, the music industry. And um, funny enough, the real estate business is very similar to touring uh -huh. because it's all about putting people together, you know, basically the home sale or purchase is the production of a show sure and there's a lot of paperwork involved you have to be very organized and you got to be people friendly yeah and um, that's really the same thing and uh, so I really enjoyed it from the get-go and I had a lot of my friends that wanted to buy or sell in Nashville that were that I knew from music or other yeah. things and we did a bunch of transactions so I really kind of didn't want to go back on the road after the pandemic came back uh, was, was done and uh, so what you're saying is 
your favorite thing is to do more my work. My favorite thing is to do more work. Yeah, no, that's really not it. But I do that a yeah. lot when I'm home, yeah, and that's, um, that's how I don't have to chase other tours. I mean, you anymore. enjoy it though, too, right? Yeah, I enjoy it. it. I'll yeah. be, I, I like being home. I like working from home. Sure. And so I get the best of both worlds because when we don't tour, I don't have to chase other tours or other work. There you go. So I either um, fly to Germany and see my parents, and my yeah. friends, awesome. or I um, stay in Nashville and enjoy my friend circle there. And yeah. I really love li living in Nashville, yeah. hanging cool. out, going to shows. Honestly, yeah. I'm a big lover of music still, awesome. and I love going to see shows and seeing my friends on the road. And that's, awesome. that's about it. You know, yeah. I love to do Pilates. I go, right. I do Pilates, and that go. keeps me sane. Yep. And in shape. Mentally somewhat. and physically. Yes. Yep. And so, yeah, that's really it. I love to travel still, but uh, honestly, I don't have enough time to really travel elsewhere but go to mm. Germany I usually yeah, go yeah. three times a year see my parents and sure. um, I usually stay like three weeks or so when I can sure. so that's about it thanks that's for taking me in a time. nutshell thanks for doing this Thank you. finally figuring thanks it for out having me. bye everybody thanks bye for everyone. watching thanks for see being you next here. time bye <laughs> and thanks this for having me fun. on tour oh my god I hope you come back I hope I come back too <laughs>